Greetings all, my name is Rachel Song and we are going to discuss about the generation and detection of frequency modulation signal. So what actually is FM? FM is the encoding of information in the carrier wave by varying the instantaneous frequency of the wave. FM also consists of component carrier component at FC and also sideband at FC plus the number of band <coughs> times FM. There are two types of modulation. The, the first one is frequency modulation and the second one is amplitude modulation. So actually nowadays people are more using on the frequency modulation because frequency modulation has, has a better noise rejection and larger signal to noise ratio. For example, FM radio, for example, the, the application of FM is radio broadcasting, radar seismic prospecting, telemetry, music synthesis, and two-way radio system. There are two types of frequency modulation. Model, frequency modulation, the first, one, the first one is modulation and the second one is demodulation. So what is modulation? Modulation is moving low frequency signal to the carrier frequency position. So at the bottom of this slide, there are a diagram that shows the process of getting the modulated FM signal. The first, the first equation is integrated to get the BFM. After that, the integrated signal we go in to the process of base modulator to get the modulated FM signal. The second one is the demodulation. Demodulation uses a system that is, has a linear characteristic to convert frequencies to voltage, then obtained the, obtain by envelope detector. Also at the bottom of the slides, there are the diagram that show the process of getting the demodulated FM signal. For the first equation, we differentiate the equation from previous from previous modulation signal. And then the envelope detector will detect the demodulated FM signal, which is the EC in bracket omega C plus KF BM. The third one is the methodology on getting the, the result. The first one is we do the literature review such as such as using Google Scholar, IE Explorer and more to get an idea on how we solve the problem. The second is the second one is the coding. We do we do a reference on the literature review and develop our own code to solve the problem. The final one is the analysis and observation. From there, we know that we achieve the objective by analysis on what the result or the result. That's all from me. Uh, thank you, Rachel as well. Uh, my name is Alexander Anderson. Uh, my name is Alexander Anderson. I'm going to explain uh, about the analysis of modulation. So uh, this is the coding based on our own research, uh, our, own, yeah, our own problem solving. So as we can see that to produce a message signal, we're going to use this formula. And F1 is actually a message frequency while the carrier signal to obtain the carrier signal, we're going to use this formula, while F2 is a carrier frequency. So the result will be produce uh, it will produce a, a negative maximum amplitude of message signal. Moving on, we're going to see how modulation and how frequency uh, how we produce a frequency domain plot. So this is the coding we can see. Uh, as you can see here, the modulation index is 15, and this is the coding for frequency domain plot. And this is the result. Uh, wait, uh, uh, as we can see here, 
uh, when beta is when beta is equal to 15 the the frequency deviation is more obvious yeah jadi ada nampak lah frequency deviation so this is at beta is equal to 15 and uh, uh, and from when we uh, when we can see from the frequency domain plot we can see there are 33 peak if we calculate there are 33 peak there are 33 peak so uh, including the one carrier frequency band so there are 16 type band also this is based on the vessel level okay moving on we can see when we decrease the modulation index to 2 so 15 to 2 we can see there is no obvious frequency deviation and we can see that uh, the band the band wave of the modulated signal decreases lah because we can we cannot see the frequency deviation uh, beside the number of side band is also increased decreased from 16 to 4 so we can see the difference thus the total of the number of peak in the frequency domain plot of beta is equal to 2 is nine peak only. However, due to the power remain the same, the magnitude of the side band increase. You can see that this the magnitude of the side band increase, increase while the number of side band of the band wave also uh, decrease lah. Ah, contoh lah. That's all from me. <laughs> okay, thank you, Alexander. And my name is Max Alexander Robert. Now I, I will discuss about the analysis for the modulation uh, simulation. Okay, as you can see here, there are two graphs of waveform. First is the demodulation, and at the bottom is the message signal, which is the original signal that we are using. So in decoding, we are actually using the differentiator method, which consists of differentiator and envelope detector. So uh, what is in differentiator. Differentiator is to convert FM signal to AM signal by differentiating its signal frequency. So after uh, the process of differentiator, we will go to the envelope detector where the envelope AM signal will then have the information that can be detected using the envelope detector, which means the envelope detector will, uh, will how to say, you will get the envelope AM signal from after the differentiate process finish. And uh, in the discriminator method, image, I want you to imagine we are having a circuit with diode and also a low pass filter, which is the capacity itself. So in the, in the circuit, uh, sorry, after having, after the, after the waveform is going through the circuit, we are not expecting a linear cosine graph, but some distortion will happen onto the detected audio signal. Why, why is it happen? Because of the, the presence of diode inside the uh, circuit itself. So that is where the capacitor or low pass, low pass filter is useful, where it will help us to uh, recover the output so that we will have a smooth uh, kind of waveform. And if we take a look at number one, that is why due to envelope detector, we are not expecting a linear cosine graph. So uh, moving on, when we take a look at the message signal, we are actually having the original signal with amplitude of negative and positive signal, one to negative one, right? So in, uh, let's look at the number two. The diode envelope detector rectifies the waveform, leaving only the positive half of the waveform. So this is another another way where the diode affect the waveform, where we will we will have the positive half of the waveform only. However, the amplitude we are getting is zero and approaching to one, but it is not actual to one. Why is it happen like that? This is due to the losses, uh, uh, due to the diode and the low pass filter. Lah. So because of that, we will have some disturbance from the frequency uh, signal. 
So that is why when in a real physical simulation, we need to use an amplifier. So what is the use of an amplifier? Amplifier will help us to maximize the output signal of the waveform. So we will be having a value of one, which is the same as the message signal. Okay, let's move on. So before we end, I want to conclude for modulation. So when the number, of, uh, the number, we can see that the number of the side then depend on the index modulation value or beta, we call as beta. Uh, and when the magnitude of the carrier signal decrease, the beta will increase. Lastly, I can conclude that we can conclude that the bandwidth of the modulated signal increase when beta is increased. For demodulation, the conclusion will be we are able to get the modulated signal to be almost the same as our message signal. And the second one, a simple FM demodulation technique is by using a direct method, which is the discriminator, by having the differentiator and envelope detector in the circuit. And last but not least, an amplifier should be connected to the circuit so that it can amplify the signal to its maximum. So this is the reference that we use in completing this, the assignment. And I think that is all from us. Thank you very much. Stay safe. Thank you.